In the previous missile guidance short course, we proposed a feedback law that related the flight path angle rate of the pursuer to a navigation gain multiplied by a line of sight rate to obtain a collision course. This was pure proportional navigation. We covered this in some depth, but it was just proposed based off of observation and intuition. When the law was proposed, did you ask yourself how we could actually obtain the law without guessing? Well, there are ways to do this. Uh, one approach is to write out the kinematic equations, mathematically establish the requirements for collision based on those kinematics, and then from those conditions derive a guidance law. Another approach is to take the kinematics and connect it with a measure of how well the engagement is doing. And then from that problem statement, apply optimal control methods to derive a guidance law. This approach is the focus of the current short course. And this module is gonna set up our first optimal control problem statement. And in the literature, you may see this approach called advanced guidance or modern guidance techniques. Now towards the problem statement, let's remember our linearized engagement. First thing to recall is that we were confined to a single spatial dimension for the kinematics. We have our pursuer and target. Here's our range vector, the velocity vectors, their maneuver vectors. The target acceleration is perpendicular to its velocity while the acceleration of the pursuer here is shown perpendicular to the range vector or to the line of sight direction. This direction of acceleration is associated with true proportional navigation. Now some angles. Here's the lead angle, the flight path angle, the line of sight angle. Also, on the right-hand side, the relative position of the target with respect to the pursuer in the vertical direction. And finally, the heading angle of the target. For a linearized engagement, the flight path angle, the heading angle, and the line of sight angle are all assumed to be small enough so that trigonometry follows the small angle approximation. Essentially, we're in a near head-on collision when we assume this linearized engagement. Relative position, that's ZT minus ZP, position of the target minus position of the pursuer. Relative velocity, simply the time derivative of each of those terms. And then relative acceleration, acceleration of the target minus acceleration of the pursuer. Now from the relative acceleration equation, we're going to make the assumption that the target does not maneuver. So that allows us to make AT zero, leaving just Z double dot is minus AP. AP is the pursuer acceleration. This is the control variable or the command that we send to the pursuer in order to achieve the collision. So if our kinematics are just Z double dot is equal to minus AP, then we can rewrite this as a set of first order ordinary differential equations with some uh, intermediate variables such as Z1 equal to Z, and then Z1 dot is equal to Z2, which is equal to Z dot, and then finally Z2 dot is equal to minus AP. And that means that our state variable, we'll call it X, with the components z1 and z2, or relative to position and relative velocity respectively. Now taking our kinematic equations and writing them in matrix form, we simply have that x dot is equal to z1 and z2 dot. z1 dot was z2, we had that one, and then z2 dot was equal to minus ap. Well, we need to add on an additional control input term to introduce the minus AP. And so here we do that. And don't forget that U is the AP variable. Now, this is a familiar form called a linear time invariant system. It's denoted often X dot is AX plus BU. And it's going to be a very convenient thing to work with as we develop our problem statement and then attempt to solve the optimization problem. 
Now onto the performance index. We're gonna denote it J. We're gonna require that J be positive, definite, and that it be a scalar. I wanna note also that we construct J to achieve what we want out of the guidance problem or out of the engagement. And it's important that as we construct J, the size of J have a well-defined relationship with the performance of how we're doing. For example, if J continues to increase, then there should be a monotonic relationship with J increasing and the engagement doing better or J increasing and the engagement doing worse. So now that's stated, what do we desire? First thing, let's say we want collision. Okay, mathematically, how do we express that? Well, we could say that collision implies that we want to minimize at some future time the relative distance between the pursuer and target. And so we can state minimize the norm of the relative position at time t where t is greater than the initial time. We also want to achieve this collision in a practical way. That is, we could do this by making the control input very large for any arbitrary time t, but that's not such a practical thing to do. So while we're attempting to collide, we also have to keep in mind that we have limits on our control input. And so simultaneously, we want to minimize a measure of the size of the control or a measure of the control effort. And these are competing objectives. Notice that if it were just one-sided, then it would tend to either make the control effort infinitely large or, or nothing. But here we have competing objectives to give us a result that finds a balance between collision and control effort. All right, now it's time to create our performance index. The first term we'll work with is the collision term. So it's a final time term. We're gonna pre-multiply it by a half. You'll see why that's important later on. And I'm gonna make this quadratic, and the requirement is gonna be that that matrix Q sub F, F for final, is gonna be positive definite. So essentially what we have is the state X with two components in it, Z1 and Z2. It's X transpose, a one by two, times a positive definite matrix, two by two, times X. So this term will always be greater than zero unless x is zero. The second term is the control effort term. And in contrast to this collision term, which is defined at a final point in time, the control effort term depends on the signal u of t. So we integrate that over the time interval from the initial time to the final time. And we're just gonna use the square integral of this as a measure of its size. So the idea with J is that we minimize it to regulate the miss at the final time and possibly the relative velocity at the final time all with minimal control effort. Let's expand a little more on the matrix QF. So it's something called a penalty matrix. And the penalties specifically are these two scalars, B and C, along the diagonal of QF. They're positive because the matrix has to be positive definite. And obviously they're gonna to correspond to the relative position and the relative velocity terms in the state vector X. So at the final time, if the collision term is minimized to zero, then not only do we hit, but the velocity of the pursuer and target are the same. Now expanding that final time term, we see the individual penalties in the Q matrix now. And think about what happens when we increase B relative to C or vice versa. Let's focus on just increasing B and holding C constant. As we increase B, this term gets larger and so J gets larger, but the control U is attempting to minimize J. So as this gets larger, the control will attempt to attack Z, to regulate Z and make this term smaller in order to minimize J. B and C are essentially tuning knobs 
where we can shift the weight of the control effort to regulate Z1 at T or regulate Z2 at T. A final note about the cost function. When we associate the LTI system, our kinematics, with that cost function, then that cost function becomes dependent on the initial condition and the initial time of the kinematics. And because of that, we write J as a function of those initial conditions. And so you see it down here. Also in J is U of a dot. That dot is just meant to represent that U is a signal as opposed to a uh, discrete value. For example, if I were to write U of T, well, that would just be U evaluated at some intermediate time T. But instead, we mean the signal U over the interval T naught to T. Now with that, we are ready to state our optimal control problem. The optimal control problem is to determine the control signal that minimizes this performance index subject to or constrained by the linear time invariant system that's just the kinematics of the engagement. Arriving at and understanding this problem statement is the main objective of this module. Now going forward, what will we do? We're going to connect our problem statement to existing theory in optimal control, specifically linear quadratic theory. We're then going to solve the optimal control problem. And while we could do it on the computer, we're actually going to solve this by hand. And in doing so, it's going to exercise our creativity and ingenuity in problem solving. And from that closed form solution, we can actually obtain different types of guidance laws. One of them being proportional navigation. To go into further detail on topics of this module, check out Neil Palumbo's paper, Modern Homing Missile Guidance Theory and Techniques. It's in the uh, Johns Hopkins APL Technical Digest. They have a nice series on homing missile guidance from 2010. This was Guidance from Optimal Control, Section 1, Module 1.